see in the title. For now, anyway, the uh, au gratin potatoes have My family won. loves and this. And I haven't done it in the Dutch oven for a very long time. Usually I do it right in my own oven. So note to self, you can do this in your own oven and you just follow all the same steps. You just would be putting it into a vessel that would go in the oven. So guys, I hope you love these videos as much as I love making them for you. And if you do, go ahead and give me a thumbs up right now and share this on your Facebook page because this recipe is delicious. <laughs> all right, and it's easy to do. So what I've got is you're gonna need potatoes and I've sliced these on the mandolin pretty thin, uh, potato chip thin, okay? If you were gonna make potato chips with these, that's how thin they would be. I've got one habanero pepper. What? Yes, one habanero pepper that I've seeded and taken the veins out of. I've got uh, a large can of diced mild green chilies. Mmm, are you getting any hints on how this is gonna taste yet? I've got some really nice fresh green onions, very pungent. A pint of heavy whipping cream. And I've got minced up a whole bulb of garlic one out of my garden and covered it in olive oil. So I've also got some butter here and some smoked paprika and salt and pepper. That's all there is to it. And this comes out absolutely fantastic. You wanna wow your family and put a little different spin on a side dish? Try this one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is in the saucepan, and um, this is uh, the small saucepan or smallest saucepan I have for the contour pots, and it's got a spout on it. I really like it. Uh, I'll try to leave a link for that because I know a lot of you ask about these uh, Cuisinart contour pots, and then you can go on Amazon and check it out. Anyways, you want uh, a mixture of fats, so I, I'm not going, I'm not going easy on any of it. You've got a good healthy two tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons of butter. And you're gonna need that pint of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna go ahead and add my garlic and because I put olive oil over it, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I covered it with a good bit of really nice olive oil. I'm gonna use the oil as well as the garlic. And what we're gonna be doing is infusing this cream with the garlic. So you heat it very slowly. As soon as you see that bubble around the edge of the pan, you are ready. You, you don't wanna scorch it, you don't wanna boil it. It's, it's just infusing it. Let it warm and kind of cook the garlic. I don't strain the garlic out. I guess you could if you were opposed to that. But I want a fair amount of garlic. I've got a pretty big bowl of potatoes there. And that was only three medium to large size russets. They weren't very big. So, okay, a ton of garlic. Let's get a little bit more oil in here. Almost equal um, oil. We need salt and pepper. And I, I love a lot of pepper. So at least a teaspoon of pepper. Maybe a half a teaspoon. Hmm, you better do a teaspoon of salt. Potatoes need salt. And then I'm gonna grab out of my water, I'm gonna grab my habaneros. Now these I will fish out of here. It's just to infuse the flavor into the cream. If you are brave and you wanna chop them up and leave them in there, you can. But it's not necessary. I have some wimpy lips that are gonna be eating this, so I've gotta be careful. <laughs> and then I want about, oh, a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Oh, that that looked weak, okay. <laughs> and it's gonna add a little earthy smokiness and some color. It's gonna infuse some color in this and how delicious this is gonna be. So pour your pint of heavy cream into your saucepan. And like I said, bring it up to a simmer. Let it simmer there without boiling, without any bubbles, just bubbles around the edge for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll layer this together. I, I can take you over. Okay guys, I know you guys are going, wait a minute, I wanna see the whole process. I know how you are because I'm the same way. And let me tell you, I just touched my cheek with the hand I used to pick up those peppers and just that little bit of oil from the pepper. My cheek is on fire, not bad, but it is definitely awake. So. You can just imagine what this sauce is gonna taste like. It's gonna have a, a spicy back note, but potatoes are bland. They can handle it, I promise you. 
Now I'm not going to add cheese to this, but you could certainly add um, any kind of cheese you like if you wanted to do that. I think that we've got enough fat going on. We don't need to add to the to the mix, but um, sorry if there's shadows bringing you up to speed. And I can see there's little bubbles around the edge. And you know when this is done, when you can smell garlic. And you'll probably smell a little bit of the pepper, but the garlic should come forward. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of a taste, make sure we have enough salt and pepper in there. And it's getting a really pretty color, just a, you know, a salmon, light, light, light salmon. Okay, we are ready to do a taste test here. And usually I smell a little bit of that pepper or capsaicin. Every pepper is going to have its own heat. See, we've got a tiny little bubble going on. Turn that down as low as you can get it. And I can smell garlic though. So let's give this a little bit of a taste. See if we've got it spicy enough. If not, I'm going to add red pepper flakes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I can taste the garlic and the... Um, the paprika, the smokiness from the paprika is delicious. And the olive oil, mmm, wow. But it is not hot enough for me. So we're gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. Not too much, but a little bit. There we go, perfect. And these will continue to warm this sauce. <laughs> and we're done. Okay, we're so we have our Dutch oven. Now, the last couple times we've cooked in this Dutch oven, we've had parchment paper in there, so it tends to dry it out a little bit. Even though I clean it out, I didn't have to clean the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and give it some love. And we don't want our potatoes to stick anyway. So olive oil. A good uh, tablespoon or so of olive oil and give that a brush around. And I want to get it up on the sides as well, just a little bit, because these potatoes are going to go up the side a little. Super easy dish to put together. And if you're going to a barbecue or you're going to somebody's house and they're cooking outside, say, do you mind if I bring a side dish and cook it for you right there? This is a fantastic one to do. It's so much fun. Okay. And everybody will want to get involved. And then they're going to want a Dutch oven. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Okay, so I'm going to reach for my potatoes here. I've got them down here. I'm going to move this over. And you're going to put a layer of potatoes. It, it can be willy-nilly, really. It does not have to be perfect. But you're doing this in layers, so. I'm make sure we get a good layer. And this is enough for three or four people, for sure. Then you want your green onions and just scatter those in. It adds a great flavor. And then now we're gonna scatter some of the green chilies. You could do, um, oh, hatch chilies would be fantastic. And then you'd get perfect amount of heat. And then we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take some of our cream and pour a little bit down, not, not a lot. There we go, because we're gonna layer this and we'll pour all of it on there, but it's going in layers. I wanna go ahead with this, this layer of potatoes. And you're gonna repeat this until we get our potatoes all gratin ready to go on the coals. Are you excited, guys? Come on. I hope you give me a thumbs up for this because it is one of my favorite dishes and my family loves this. It's gonna go fantastic with that steak. I'm so glad you guys chose this for us. <laughs> okay, again with the cream. I make this um, during the holidays too. Now, if one of those habaneros pops in here, we're gonna grab it. We don't want it in there. We don't need it in there, I should say. Hopefully it's given up all of its flavor. Habanero peppers have a really good flavor and the heat is on the back of your tongue, so it's not overwhelming. I wanna try to get one more layer out of these guys, so go ahead with the green onions. 
If you didn't have green onions, you could certainly use um, a red onion or a white onion, whatever your preference, and then maybe put some cilantro in there. Um, I'm not a fan of cooked cilantro so much. I think it's better fresh. Okay, last potatoes. Mm, here we go. Oh, this is gonna be good. Okay. So as you can see, all the layers are not that thick. This is filling this four quart Dutch oven about halfway up, um, which is exactly what I wanted. I don't want it to be to the top, although you could do it to the top. You would just wanna control the top heat better, just like we're gonna control the bottom heat because the legs on this one are rather short, so we're gonna diffuse it off the coals a little. And um, somebody was asking me about that, I think, and I misunderstood, but Okay, and the rest of your, your cream without the habanero. Uh-oh, one fell in. Uh-oh, two, three, four. I can keep these out, here we go. I don't wanna lose any of that cream though. That is the good stuff right there. And if you don't feel like you have enough liquid in your pan, you can always add a little bit more milk or cream or even chicken stock. Um, I'm gonna leave it just the way it is because I think it'll be fine. When I push down, I can see the cream and the liquid in there and that's what you want. You wanna be able to see it when you push down, come up to the side a little bit. Okay guys. Let's go get those coals started. Okay, so I almost forgot. You need to end this with just a dusting of your smoked paprika to make it pretty. There you go. Now we're ready to go to the coals. <laughs> okay guys, our coals are ready or as ready as I need them to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift my um, chimney and dump it out onto this cast iron and some of these are more ready than others but if you set them next to the hot ones they'll catch fire as well just like in the chimney so now I want to go ahead and put um, on my lid I am going to put the majority of these coals because the potatoes are further away from the coals so I don't know if you can see that but we're gonna just take this little so now that I have the coals on the bottom that I want, I'm gonna go ahead because this one, this Dutch oven, the feet on it are pretty short. And so I've gotta get it up off the coals just a bit so it would set as if it had longer feet. And then I've got my potatoes right here. We're gonna go ahead and put that on. And we want to cook this like a 350 to 375 degree oven because those potatoes are going to take a little while to get done. It's going to be delicious. Let me give you one more look at the potatoes. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And you can see there's plenty of liquid in there. I didn't add any more milk or cream and it's going to be fantastic. Okay guys, this has been out here an hour and a half and we're losing daylight. And unfortunately, with daylight savings time happening, we're going to be limited on when we can do these videos, but I'm still gonna try to bring you as many of these as I can because I know a lot of you are enjoying this series. So I'm gonna take my lid off. Uh, be careful, if you are in a windy area, be careful that you've got um, your coals and ashes shielded from the wind. I'm gonna set this over here, woohoo! Look at that. Now that's a thing of beauty right there. And it smells fantastic. So you wanna go ahead and pierce all the way through and see how easy that came in and out. There's no resistance whatsoever. It is totally done. It's ready to go rest. And this is gonna rest up to an hour. So you can pre-cook this and get the rest of your meal done. And what I'm gonna do, let's blow those ashes off there that way um, 
I'm gonna set this on my table on a turbot and uh, protect my table but I'm gonna put uh, some foil loosely on it and <laughs> we will go ahead and give you a taste test when it's not hot lava but look how beautiful it's a little brown on top and just perfect I couldn't ask for a more well-rounded dish I'm super excited and I love saucy scalloped or saucy ugg rotten potatoes and so remember, guys our dinner is almost done and I can't put the steaks on until the guys get here so I want to go ahead and give you a taste test this has had a chance to cool down and really set up nicely and oh I'm gonna take some pictures for you I'm excited <laughs> oh my goodness and maybe I should just bring you in close let's bring you in close for this yeah you don't need to okay see guys, me. the moment of truth. Oh, doesn't it look beautiful? And it has had a chance to sit here and just kind of get nice and um, we're ready to taste it. I'll try to show you some end shots of the whole dinner on the plate. Go ahead and get that off on my, um, but the guys aren't back from hunting yet and this is, ready to take a taste test. So I wanted to taste it for you. And look how beautiful that is. Hopefully that light's not too bright for you. But we are gonna take a bite of this. Oh, look at that. Nice, tender potatoes. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And it's got the perfect amount of spice. I personally, because I'm a salt, kind of a salt freak, I would like a little more salt to it, but you can add that at the table. It's definitely not bland. It's got that back heat from the habanero and the green chilies just complement it. It's so wonderful. You guys, I hope that you give this a try. Mm. Whether it's in your regular oven or you do it in your Dutch oven, and I challenge you to do it in a Dutch oven outside because it's delicious, oh my gosh. So I'm gonna take some pictures. I hope that you and in this inspires you to go ahead and start Dutch oven cooking. And as always guys, I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe from the Dutch oven or anything from the kitchen. All right guys, oh my gosh, it's so good. Mm. Absolutely creamy and delicious. These are without a doubt one of the best side dishes that you could possibly make in the Dutch oven. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time. Go check the links below and get yourself your own Dutch oven. And I'll try to leave you the full recipe so you're not struggling for that. I try as often as I can to do that for you and this one I'll go ahead and do it because it's pretty simple and I'm not going to be typing forever but I won't leave you the instructions because you have to watch the video. Alright guys, bye!